Global diversification is universally accepted as beneficial to investors, but foreign withholding tax is a tricky little detail that can eat into your investment returns. When a foreign company pays a dividend to a Canadian investor, the company's home country will often impose a tax on the dividend. The amount of tax withheld by the foreign government depends on the arrangement between the two countries. For example, the U.S. government keeps 15% of any dividend paid by a U.S. company to a Canadian resident investor. These taxes are withheld before the dividend is received in your investment account, so it's easy to miss. Foreign withholding tax can have a significant negative impact on returns if it is not managed properly. In many cases, the impact can be greater than the management expense ratio on most ETFs. I'm Ben Felix, Associate Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital. In this episode of Common Sense Investing, I'm going to tell you about foreign withholding tax. The amount of damage that foreign withholding tax will do to your returns depends on the structure of the vehicle that you are using to invest and the type of account that the vehicle is owned in. In the world of ETFs, there are three main structures that a Canadian investor will see. A US listed ETF, a Canadian listed ETF that gets its exposure to the market by holding a US listed ETF, or a Canadian listed ETF that gets its exposure to the market by holding stocks directly. Depending on how the ETF is structured, you may be subject to two levels of withholding tax. In their 2016 white paper titled Foreign Withholding Taxes, my PWL colleagues Justin Bender and Dan Bordelotti explained it this way. You can think of level one foreign withholding tax like a departure tax that you pay when taking a flight to Canada from any foreign country. Level two withholding tax is tax that you pay to the US government when an overseas flight has a layover in the US. Level 1 withholding tax is the tax levied by any foreign country, including the US, on dividends paid to a Canadian investor. Level 2 withholding tax is an additional 15% withheld by the US government on dividends paid to a Canadian investor by a Canadian listed ETF that owns a US listed ETF. Taxes are first withheld when the dividend is paid from a foreign company to the US listed ETF, and then again when the US listed ETF passes that dividend on to a Canadian investor. The type of account matters for a few reasons. First, U.S. securities held in an RRSP or other retirement account, like a RIF or LIRA, do not have any tax withheld by the U.S. on dividends. This is part of the Canada-U.S. tax treaty. Based on this, a U.S. listed ETF of U.S. stocks will not have any tax withheld on dividends paid in an RRSP. The same special treatment does not apply for the TFSA and RESP accounts. Other countries do not have a similar arrangement for Canadian resident investors. This means that foreign withholding tax will apply on dividends paid from international stocks regardless of the account type. In a taxable account, foreign taxes withheld are reported on your T3 or T5 and can generally be used to offset your Canadian taxes. In that sense, while foreign taxes are paid, they are recoverable. In a registered account, like your RRSP or TFSA, there are no T-slips produced so the foreign tax that you pay cannot be used to offset your Canadian taxes. This makes foreign withholding taxes paid in your registered accounts unrecoverable. Knowing which types of ETFs to hold in each type of investment account has the potential to save you a lot of money in the long term. I will not go through every possible combination of ETF structures and account types in this video, but I will highlight the ones that are most important to watch out for. For all of the details, I highly recommend reading Justin and Dan's white paper, which I've linked in the description. As I mentioned earlier, holding a US listed ETF that holds US stocks in your RRSP eliminates any foreign withholding tax. The only thing to keep in mind here is that to purchase a US listed ETF, you will need US dollars. Obtaining US dollars also has a cost, and that cost can outweigh the benefit of reducing your foreign withholding tax. You can use a technique called Norbert's Gambit to reduce the cost of currency conversion. The process is not overly complicated, but I would not say it's appropriate for beginners either. Justin Bender has outlined how to execute Norbert's Gambit on his YouTube channel. To contrast holding a US listed ETF of US stocks in your RRSP, holding a Canadian listed ETF of US stocks in your RRSP results in about a 0.25% unrecoverable foreign withholding tax cost. Similarly, holding a US listed ETF of US stocks in your TFSA account 
will result in an unrecoverable foreign withholding tax cost of around 0.25% per year. When we start investing in countries other than the US, we have to start thinking about the potential for level 2 withholding tax. That is, taxes withheld both by a foreign country other than the US and taxes withheld by the US. One of the worst offenders for level 2 withholding tax is a Canadian listed ETF that owns a US listed ETF of international stocks held within a TFSA or RESP account. In this case, there are two levels of foreign withholding tax applied, and both of them are unrecoverable. There are ETFs in Canada that do hold international stocks directly as opposed to holding their US listed counterpart, such as XEF and XEC from iShares. Canadian index mutual funds, such as those from Dimensional Fund Advisors, also hold all securities directly, so there's only one level of withholding tax to worry about. This is all interesting and important to know. But what do you do now? There are many people who believe that optimizing for which assets should be held in which type of account to minimize foreign withholding tax and taxes overall is extremely important. This is a practice known as asset location. Asset location inevitably makes your portfolio and your life more complicated. Is it worth it? Find out in my next video. What have you done to minimize foreign withholding tax? Tell me about it in the comments. Thanks for watching. My name is Ben Felix of PWL Capital, and this is Common Sense Investing. I'll be talking about a lot more common sense investing topics in this series, so subscribe, click the bell for updates.